Early to mid 90s were rich times for FPS games on the PC, while Doom, Duke Nukem 3D and Quake understandably hog a lot of the glory, there are a lot of gems under the surface. One of them being Blake Stone by Jam Productions from Apogee's catalog of gaming excitement. The former being phoned by Mr. Jim Rowe and Mike Maynard from Gamer's Edge, the monthly PC game disc in 1990 distributed by Softdisk where they held heads of department positions. Jam Productions sadly was very short-lived, their only products being Blakestone and its sequel Blakestone Planet Strike, which both utilized the license to Wolf 3D Engine with some modifications made to it. The game's interesting and at times very innovative features, which we'll get into soon, sadly didn't help the game gain much sales to Doom being released a week after Blakestone in December 1993, and ever since it just sat there on Apogee 3D Realms catalog. I'm sure it's had its fans out there, but I never see this game gain the recognition it deserves. I have a bit of a past with this game and I'll be the first to admit and embrace the nostalgia, but I do know it's not just the fond memories that make this game stand on its own feet, so let's take a look. The Wolf 3D engine might have tipped you off that it's an FPS game like many in its time. The premise is laid down by a comic in the manual and the 11 pages of storyline sitting tight in the game's menu. Stuff goes down in the year 2K140, and the eponymous English agent Blake Stone is sent to wipe out this bad man, Dr. Goldfire, who with his self-funded space complexes and a big mean degree in genetic mutation, plans to take over the world and then the galaxy. Wow! The game follows an episodic format, the first being of course available in the shareware and the rest through registration. Nowadays you can grab the game on Steam and GOG for roughly a bad pizza's worth of money. The game then throws you into environs that understandably look like those of Wolfenstein 3D, but there is a nice amount of detail and variety in here. Tiled walls, floors and ceilings of different colors, along with the occasionally really believable sci-fi facility level nail to setting. The game's just got this nice sense of identity and it stretches out to the gang of bad dudes you'll have to put up with. Seriously, the enemy design is brilliant despite the engine being hardly capable of making each enemy feel different. They still went through the effort of creating multiple different sprites and most of them are perfectly serviceable, if not really freaking good sci-fi beasties. The sludge pot aliens were a real nightmare feel for me as a kid. I never looked at pea soup the same way. The premise is cool, but how does it play? Honestly, it's pretty sophisticated for its time. The game has these really early examples of interactive world design in FPS games. For example, among the roster of enemies you can find these enemy scientists with the twist that some of them are actually informants that are undercover agents on your side. And if you go out of your way to mash spacebar on them instead of the trigger, they'll give you some flavor text, tips and food tokens, which brings me to the other point of interactivity. As you saw a moment ago, some of the walls have these food dispensers and if you got the tokens, you can spend them to get something resembling food that heals you up. And then some of the levels have crates that you can blow up for loot, uh, along with explosive barrels and boxes, and then you have these barriers that can be toggled on or off with switches. And as I learned from a very young age, courtesy of a tip from my granddad, you can frag baddies with the barriers quite easily. Nice. Let's stick to the game's design and presentation for a while longer. Look at the hut here. Hard to read? Maybe a tiny bit, but look at all the flavor going on. Especially this pop-up with the enemy sprite and their name when you're being attacked. It's, it's really freaking neat. And even after that it reads out whatever you pick up or find, and it displays the informant dialogue as well. But the cherry on top of the cake is the display of these enemy scientist quips if you alert them. I was never a bright kid, but hopefully you'll understand why a non-English kid of six years old would be confused by the absurdity of this shit talking. I may be pushing it a little, but this informant and enemy scientist two-way ends up being quite interesting, since the actual enemies will aggro if they see or hear you gunning down their colleagues and compatriots, which occasionally leads to these quite emergent moments where you might run into a stalking scientist when you thought every enemy had already been mowed down. And then there's the soundtrack. It's composed by Bobby Prince himself and you can certainly hear the hard rock influences on it once again. The tunes are banging and they loop over and over again in his usual style, as was customary for the time as well. There's also some very hum-worthy pieces all throughout the game. 
so to touch more on the gameplay. To progress you'll need to scrounge each level for a red key card, which unlocks the next floor through the elevator that also serves as each map's starting point. Meaning the levels have a set start and end location which shows in the map design. They very often loop around quite nicely and they use one-way doors to funnel you through important areas while placing the occasional locked door along the way. For a 90s corridor shooter it really doesn't feel like a corridor shooter. This case is helped by the occasional completely flavor-oriented rooms when the maps have the extra space left. You can find some cafeteria storages and cozy little computer corners with a handful of goodies and bad guys inside. The game ends up feeling like a guided tour through a space station without you really noticing, and I don't think I'm overcrediting the game here, it's just honestly very solid in its level design, and if standalone levels weren't good enough, you'll have the chance to revisit them later via the elevator to pick up ammo or health if you're in a bad, bad way, as well as having teleporters linked between stages, which will eventually lead to secret levels. And speaking of secrets, the game wears these major arcade sensibilities on its sleeve, like many titles of its time. Much like in Wolfenstein, there are pushable secret walls and a whole lot of loot to pick up here and there. The score counter reaches 7 digit numbers within a half an hour of casual play, and at set intervals of score, you're rewarded with HP, ammo and life boosts. The game still does allow for saving and loading without restrictions, so no stress about the lives. It's curious how many games did this back in the day. The game also features a smart auto map displaying enemies and informants left. It updates in real time so as you go along you can always check if you're going the wrong way. As even with fairly clear level design, there is the occasional maze like level where this will come pretty darn handy. So it's time for the age old FPS questions. How's the gunplay and how are the targets? As much as they can be sci-fi recolors of conventional weaponry, there's a lot of character here from the silent stubby gun to the spiky pistol or carrot launcher thing. There's a rapid fire rifle, plasma launcher and the favorite one of mine which occupies the fourth slot. It's the dual neutron disruptor which spews the best noise at enemies as it punches holes through them. And to touch on the enemy department a little, it's a bit of a shining star. You've got the aforementioned scientists, you've got your run-of-the-mill guardsmen, machine gunmen, and then it starts to get interesting. You've got these green beret commandos who occasionally when receiving lethal damage, they fall down and play dead only to get up within a minute to fight again. However, the next time you punch holes through them, they're down for good. Besides these, you've got all the aliens that look and seem different, but besides damage numbers and the projectile sprites, they're really not too different. I imagine the lack of differences between the enemies is largely due to the limitations of the engine, but there's still a whole lot of character here. And last but not least, you've got Dr. Goldfire himself, who appears at set levels to taunt and shoot at you, and once you get to fight back, the prick just teleports away laughing. He gets what's coming to him, but that's a long way away. So, that's all I can say about Blakestone at this moment. I find it an underappreciated product of its time. It's eclipsed by the instant classic that was Doom, but it isn't without its own interesting features and gimmicks. It might not have done well even back in its day, but during the time it took me to make this video I kept wanting to play more, so to me it definitely has long lasting appeal and I totally recommend you give it a go. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.